Hello everyone, my name is Naveen Raina. I head the enterprise business for LinkedIn Sales Solutions. Welcome to Take the Lead, an executive leadership series where we bring in insightful conversations in conversation with global leaders. Today, I have Orika Hogan, EVP and Chief Communication Officer from DNV Group. DNV Group is a leading global organization in quality management and risk assurance. They have technical expertise in maritime, energy, F&B and healthcare. Orica has over 20 years of experience in brand communication, marketing, and she also leads the ESG uh, charter in the organization. Orica, welcome to our uh, podcast today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Same here. Uh, let's warm it up a okay. bit more uh, and we do it the LinkedIn way where we're going to ask you a question around what's not on your LinkedIn profile. Oh, okay. Well, I can start with saying that I do use LinkedIn a lot and okay. LinkedIn is kind of my business social media. So I feel like it's the best way to share, you know, experience, impressions, thoughts, articles, things like that. So something you would not find on my LinkedIn would be a photo of our cabin in the Norwegian mountains. But okay. you would find that a lot actually on my social media, my private social media, and lots of pictures of the family skiing, etc. And that actually has a little story behind if I can. Absolutely, yeah? go for it. Because uh, after an exciting career in London, working in a law firm, uh, my husband and I decided that London would not be the right place for career and family. Mm -hmm. So we decided on either moving to Germany, where I'm from, or to Norway, where he is from. Mm -hmm. And he still says to me, we uh, ended up in Norway because I put on the list of advantages for Norway that it's so cozy in the cabin because I love the cabin world of life. But there's okay. actually a lot more to it than that uh, because Norway is, has a unique culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got opportunities for yeah, work-life balance, family and career. And in terms of culture, it's, you know, it's a small country, yet very international uh, in terms of integration and uh, equality. And uh, it's got kind of, it ticks the right boxes in terms of, uh, you know, a Nordic culture. But that image would not be on LinkedIn. That was a long answer. But oh, sorry. love <laughs> the answer, love the answer and love the focus on how for you life, equality and all these are very big things. ESG has been core business issue which a lot of organizations are grappling with and relationships has been a core of any business strategy. The question is how do you marry ESG with relationships? While there are so many definitions that are floating around ESG and what it really means, what does ESG mean for you and DNV as part of the strategy? Yeah, that's a good question. So sustainability, we've been doing sustainability for 160 years, I would say. I mean, let me start with our purpose of safeguarding life, property and the environment, which mm -hmm. in the essence is sustainability. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, yes, things have moved into ESG. ESG stands for environmental, social and governance performance. Mm -hmm. uh, so it consists of measurable indicators of a company's impact on those three areas. It's sure. a framework that allows, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the performance tracking in environmental, social and governance related things. So it's the non-financial reporting and if the non-financial reporting is combined with the financial reporting this gives a better kind of overall picture to stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Stakeholders meaning could be customers, investors, employees who then can benchmark you know uh, our performance. Very interesting. Just double clicking on this while we know the why sustainability is critical what does that mean for business? Yeah um, ESG is in a way a sharpening of the focus on and, and shifting it from the why to the how we should enable transformation. Uh, it's about benchmarking where a company is today, mm -hmm. uh, setting targets and measuring performance as companies work to achieve these goals. But even if you don't buy kind of the sustainability <laughs> argument, I've got two kind of uh, harder arguments okay. maybe uh, that, yeah. There's just a tsunami of regulations coming up yes. to companies. So companies will have to comply with ESG uh, regulations and we can go into the details a little bit later. So uh, stakeholders, they expect 
stakeholders, including investors, employees, uh, mm -hmm. customers, they, they expect from companies more transparency than they, they had before. So ESG is a framework that, that can provide that, that transparency. And maybe secondly, it also makes business sense to address the risk and opportunities that are faced, uh, that, that businesses are facing. And there again, ESG is a good framework to, to, to use. I love that, especially the fact that regulation plays a huge role in terms of how business would be done. Can you share a few examples of some of your clients where you've helped them understand the whole concept of sustainability to you know, foster their growth? Yes. Uh, yes, let me uh, think of a couple of examples. Um, one example is, for instance, uh, we love to work with renewable energy. Mm -hmm. we, our business comes from the maritime sector, so safeguarding kind of uh, the, the, the life of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the seafarers and, and the, the quality and risk management of ships. But mm -hmm. then we moved into energy. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, also food and beverage and healthcare. But an example from energy, we need more renewable energy. So one of our exciting projects that we're working on is the certifica certification of the biggest offshore wind farm that okay. is actually lo located outside the UK and it's called the Hornsea One project. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, the owner is the Danish energy company Ørsted uh, and it has a capacity of 1.2 gigawatts. And actually, our role, just to explain kind of you know what we've done, is DNV's role uh, in the project was to provide independent, independent verification of the wind farm's design, the manufacturing process, the installation, the commissioning, um, and that if involves the assessing of the whole project. So again, ESG, risk management, etc. And we are now involved in 80% of uh, the, wor the world's offshore uh, wind farms that are out there at the moment. Oh, wow. It is yes. huge. It is huge, but we need so much more renewable electricity. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Just to give I've you. I've got another one. Oh, sorry. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I would love to hear I want another. To get another one yes. across here because energy transition is kind of like very close to our heart, and we feel that across the business areas, you know, mm -hmm. this is something where um, all the business areas and the needs of customers are the same. So the key focus is um, we work to help our customers to decarbonize, to improve energy efficiency, and to report on their emissions. And there's one case that I wanted to mention is that we are working together with the mining company BHP probably mm -hmm. no BHP of course yeah uh, so we've got a, a partnership where BHP is using our industry data platform called Veracity to provide timely and accurate greenhouse gas emissions reporting that's wow. a long word um, many companies they just need their emissions reporting once a year for their annual report mm -hmm. but actually BHP for their vessels so for the ships mm -hmm. for them it's important to get regular uh, emissions reporting because they can fine tune you know they can they can see kind of how to best operate the ships to be most fuel efficient so okay. those are kind of two examples on how we can make an impact this is amazing and um, at LinkedIn we we also track how uh, green skills are being built across. Yeah. So there's a very interesting report that we came up with where we see there is a 300% increase in green skills and sustainability skills that are happening across the globe. Yeah. And interesting is APAC leading through that. Yeah. Um, and it's a very interesting segue to our next half. When you, when you, when you were talking about these two organizations that you partnered really closely, for me, there was another very interesting angle coming out, which is around while you're doing all of this work, it requires a lot of trust and relationship yeah. to be built while you're working with your customers. Yeah. So how do you see trust and relationship as core of what you're doing while you're driving sustainability? Yeah. Um, Oh, that's a big question. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, trust and relationship and building relationship, there's so many touch points, so mm -hmm. many elements that build into building strong customer relationships. There's kind of not, not one answer. Yep. But let me focus on maybe thought leadership and expertise as a way we build trust and strong relationships. We are 13,000 engineers, uh, 13,000 nerds and experts. <laughs> uh, I'm allowed to say that, but they're, they're amazing. They're amazing, awesome. really. Uh, 13,000 amazing colleagues and they have deep industry knowledge. Uh, so it, it's kind of our, our people combined with that knowledge that mm -hmm. I think uh, helps our customers to, to trust us. Um, and one example is that we publish uh, on an annual basis an energy transition outlook report. Okay. And, uh, and 
our customers take this report um, uh, to take informed business decisions. So for us, it's a way to have a good dialogue with the customers. They have the right, you know, content and, and kind of that helping the customer building relationships through expertise and knowledge, I think, kind of, you know, is, is, it makes, makes a strong yeah. customer relationship. All right. As, as we spoke about trust and relationship, how is relationship as a core KPI in your organization, do you have a way to track that? How do you do that? Yeah, that's a good question. First of all, our company's vision is to be a trusted voice to tackle global transformations. Okay. That means really to be a trusted advisor to our customers, helping them in their global transformations. And that vision puts the customer relationship really at the heart of our strategy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we have different ways of measuring it. We have customer satisfaction surveys. Mm -hmm. We've developed a customer relationship strength score. And we also measure uh, through brand survey, the overall kind of you know, strength of the relationships. So, so there's different ways to measure, but overall what I think we were quite positively surprised about was that even though we all went through a pandemic where mm -hmm. you could see customers much less than before, yeah. those scores have gone up. So it actually means that we've been able to manage to build relationships also through, you know, digital means. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is very nice to also be able to have, you know, face to face conversations again. So we've what we've done, we've set ourselves some smart travel to our targets, which actually fits quite well into the topic of ESG. Yeah. Because uh, as a company, we say that we are reducing 40 percent of CO2 emissions mm -hmm. uh, compared to pre pandemic levels. Yeah? which means that when I'm talking to our sales guys, I say, imagine you usually meeting a customer three times. You're still allowed to meet the customer face to face twice, but once in a digital way. I mean, that should be possible to still maintain a good customer relationship. Huh? I, I love that. I love that. It's, it's very interesting. There was a research done by uh, one of the leading sales transformation organization, and they, they said 70% of the times when buyers are interacting with sellers, they have already researched about them. So to your point, mm -hmm. there are a lot of touches that happens before you actually walk into a client yeah. meeting. Uh, and I know DNB works with LinkedIn at different levels. We do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> be it marketing, be it sales, or in yeah. your skill piece. Would you want to share um, your, your, your experience while you're working uh, on LinkedIn and how does that fit into your relationship strategy? Sure. Um, LinkedIn has been an important partner for DNB on the you know marketing, sales, and talent uh, side. So, uh, and it's our you know most important communication channel for myself. You know, I love you using LinkedIn. So it's it's. But in terms of LinkedIn sales solutions, has been supporting our sales and marketing teams very much in identifying stakeholders. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very you know good tool to uh, engage with the right stakeholders at the right time at the right with the right messaging. It also provides us with deep insights on both the buyer and the company, and this allows our consultants and experts to build trust and credibility. And at the end, let me share an example. Uh, I mentioned the energy transition outlook before, mm -hmm. and this is kind of like our, you know, our Bible. Um, 350 pages of research. Um, wow. So over the past seven years, we have built up very good ways of, you know, pushing it to the right target audience. Mm -hmm. and, and LinkedIn has been a key kind of key tool for us to do that. So we've actually managed to, um, you know, inform our customers about this new report through LinkedIn as communications channel uh, and managed to now pass the 150,000 download mark per year, wow. which is really a lot for a research uh, research report uh, of DNB. Thank you so much for sharing this. and. This is overwhelming because it gives us a value saying, you know, this is helping you. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing it. With that, it was an amazing conversation to have with you. Look forward to these conversations again. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And I mean, with this background, amazing. Love to be in Singapore. Thank Thanks. you so much. <laughs>